that and this was that. So welcome back. I'm just going to thank you all. And uh, uh, the morning session was such a delight and a joy. And I'm looking forward to the afternoon being equally wonderful it is. Um, when, you know, there was talk in the morning about certain assumptions, stereotypes, prejudices about Kadak and its relation to Bob and whether or not, you know, it's as sophisticated or as developed or <coughs> some charis. And I think the presentation by Saswati really opened up any prejudiced eyes about the fact that uh, it all depends on the artist and their depth and, and what they're able to grow, as she said, as an individual. So another genre with a great deal of stereotypes, assumptions, is Manipuri. And uh, perhaps I think the least understood of the major classical styles. Um, and so I am more than delighted that Guru Singh Ajit Singh and Charosi Jamadur have been able to make the time and the effort to come and share with us the, um, uh, the very special way that Abhinaya is treated and developed uh, in Manipuri. Um, I, I mean, I hope everyone realizes that the uh, bhakti, of course, is supreme. And because, you, again, when uh, it was spoken of, of how the dance today is getting more aggressive, more assertive, more for applause, more for everything, and moving away from what this monodama was generations ago. Manipuri has maintained the inner expression that truly comes from the whole body and is not about uh, uh, jatra like melodrama. And so uh, uh, I'm looking forward as much as you are to hearing what Guruji has to share about how he was trained in Bhav, how he learned to develop it, how he was able through choreography, uh, solo as well, as well as group, but how to develop that monodama to bring it out. And as I mentioned in the morning, uh, manodharma, Sanskrit, manodama, prakrit, odia, these are the same things very much. Okay, and so I'd like to please uh, have you come up and welcome very much. Thank you. Charuji, I buy it. You can show his uh, Ramayana. Okay. That would be nice. Later on. Yeah. Okay, then take one chair away. You come here. <laughs> we keep readjusting to suit, hopefully, whenever you want to <laughs> Oh, you don't need this. Good afternoon, everybody. What a pleasure to be at a place where I know almost everybody. Well, it's just like being at my own home. It's a pleasure. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Put loud. Please, please, please tell me. Put loud. Let's check if they're loud. Let's check if they're loud. Sound. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the same family of dancers, old dancers, young dancers, whom we see almost every day. Performing art is a living thing, living thing. It has to change, it has to adapt. For the simple reason that in order to be alive, we have to die every day, little, little. If I was not changing, I wouldn't have been alive, I would have been gone a long time back. But at the same time, the two words she has taken, Manodharma and Beyond Technique, are very, very dangerous words, <laughs> as we know. Manodharma can mean anything. At the same time, when it is applied to performing arts of a country, particularly India, we see so many styles of dance, so many styles of music. One so different from the other. At the same time, so Indian in every respect is a very challenging thing. To begin with, with manodharma, mana, mind, mind, mind. Despite the fact that since the time of Plato, Aristotle, since the time of, of world Upanishads, all the thinkers of the world have tried to solve what is the mind, what is the mind. Nobody still knows. We don't know either. And it's dharma's behavior in relation to us, our society, our civilization, and art is much more intriguing. Mano dharma. Like aesthetics. When we say aesthetic, we think of beauty. It also means ugly. Like the <coughs> mercury of the <coughs> thermometer. It means plus minus boots. So mano dharma can also be mano adharma at the same time. <laughs> so we have to be very conscious about that. And in context, this has got to be thought and considered in context to the time, place, and purpose we are today at this place. What is true today may not be true tomorrow. Things are changing unusually fast. When I looked up about Mano Dharma, <coughs> about the kind of, um, uh, we, we keep on doing all kinds of experiments. South Indian music, they keep on doing that every day. If you listen to any South Indian concert, God, from the beginning, everybody was sitting like this, and they, they mix, they will play all kinds of oh, peculiar acrobatics with rhythmics. It is in their blood. Right from the beginning of learning music, oh, they are actually addicted to that. I learned, since I was to speak here, I said I, I should not sound very uninformed, so I just looked up some information. I found that a particular singer performed a particular raga for seven days in continuation. That is the kind of, they were proud of it. At the same time, when it comes to such things you're inventing, creating all the time, is it for the sake of record that you're creating? Is it aesthetically pleasing? At times it happens. Art gets mixed up at times. Because I remember when I was at, I used to go to Krishna Ganesha almost every year. A young, no, I'm sorry, a very old senior, I don't remember her name, then uh, Bharatanatyam dancer sat with me. Mr. Singh, yesterday there was a performance. The dancer was very, very innovative. Then in the Burnham, she repeated this word about 40 times, 50 times. It don't end. And then I got it and went away. Because there is a limit to everything. Everything, there's a satiation point after that, naturally, that the diminishing returns. You know, it, it starts becoming very annoying at times. So one has to be very reserved, one has to be very careful about Mano Dharma. Again, against the background we are sitting today. When you look at the electronic media, at the television, or stage shows, another manodharm has come up. Change. Why are you changing? Is it a necessity? Or for the sake of changing? It has different connotations nowadays. If we look back to the Western world, at the peak of popularity of Western classical ballet, what's in uh, well, Europe and also in uh, 
Moscow and then Leningrad, all those places. It was like they were like they were treated like gods, goddesses, so popular that all of a sudden, after the Second World War, a wave of modernism started, both with theatre, literature, painting, and dance too. It became so much that those who wanted a new way of doing things, I don't blame them. There are serious, pe serious people, very, very talented people, like from Martha Graham, this, that, and I don't remember the names. They started calling ballet performers and ballet men who used to go to see ballets, their addicted audiences. They said, these are conformed conformists, addicted conformists, outdated. Well, it was their view, but still ballet is on. It's quality, we cannot forget. All the famous dancers of those days, they were like gods. And, but things went on. Then came literature, then came drama, then came oh, well, modern painting, modern theater. Then again came postmodern, post postmodern. It will go on and on and on. The problem we're facing today is not that. This was one thing I wanted to be very clear about at the very beginning. We are not suffering from that. We are not sick of our classical dances. We are not sick of our folk dances. We have not come to the satiation point. This is my view. We have been changing. We think of Balasaraswati. I remember seeing her as a child. Krishna and Well, I thought it was the most beautiful thing in the world. Times have changed. If she were to perform today the same thing, perhaps we won't even like it. I cannot say anything about it. Because people's taste change. We can change it. We can change the people. It is both subjective and objective. The thing you're looking at, and was Rasika is very important. The relation between the Rasa, Rasyate, Aswadayate, the Rasa. Until it is not enjoyed by the consumer while you're cooking, then it has no meaning, absolutely no meaning. And we belong to the time. Janyanam Janakahakaru. Time is the father of everything that comes into being. And once you're out of step with time, you are put away and you are asked to retire. We live in that world. And luckily, these dancers who organized the seminar wanted to do some thinking, inner thinking, out of thinking. I appreciate this very much. Then, another factor. Change. What kind of change? Dharma lakshana. Dharma lakshana avastha parinava. They are the three things given. And these days we are talking so much about yoga, 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 yoga. <laughs> well, everything is yoga now. Politically, yoga. Religiously, yoga. Everything is yoga. What what I saw the yoga festival, oh, well, it looked like me. I'm a very simple person. I'm not a yogi, nor a thinker of that variety. Even so, I told that, well, we are trying to turn everything into yoga now. A restaurant is a yoga. A singer is a dancer is a yoga. If there is justification, all right. And all we know are either you stand on our heads or you do something, well, a kind of uh, some typical posture that becomes yoga. The very basics of yoga. Yoga chitta bhitti nirodha. Yoga is for controlling your mind. Well, contrary to that we think, we see lots of things. Yoga is being used for politics, yoga is being used for business, yoga is being used for promoting your commercial products. I, in my own humble way, think that, well, they are misusing the whole concept of yoga. And in the fourth or fifth chapter, I don't remember, Oh, well, what are the Bhutendriyas? That's a rupa gandha shabda expression. All our senses, you see, you hear, smell, you taste, you touch, you smell. All these factors are used to understand dharma lakshana avastha parinama. What is the lakshana we are looking at? This is one of the questions. 
that came into mind. Yes, indeed, it is very true. Dharma Parinam. Example given is, if you mix a metal with another metal and you become another alloy, then you cannot change back into the same thing. But if you use a piece of gold to make an earring, to what you can change it to, to a bracelet or thing, still it can be changed. But once you have Dharma Parinam, luxury you can be changing. But Abhastha Parinam, we cannot change, we belong to time. When I came to Delhi in 1954, long time back, young ladies were not born at that time. I was looking for you, you were not there. <laughs> <laughs> at that time, Kutub Minah was the highest thing in the world. Wow! Now many buildings are there to match Kutub Minah. The Kutub Minah is not tall anymore. Abhastha Parinam. So these parinamas are there, but it says, it paid a bhutendriya shu, it was a sense of organs. We prove, we understand that parinama changes, but it's not always true. In the case of, in the case of ours, it's not always true. Now let me refer to the different dance forms. I came at a time, 1954. Realizing was not a critic at that time. Perhaps I saw her on the TV. Am I right? Yeah. I thought, please, this beautiful lady really knows. <laughs> I did have a knowledge she would become my sister. One yes, day. yes, 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 yes. One, yes. One of the most beautiful things on the TV screen. And we became very good friends. I learned so much from her. But she used to point out, look here, she did this, that. And we grew up together. One of the best friends I have had today. My husband, of course, one of the most charming human beings on earth. Now, what I'm coming to is, all the different form, art forms in this country, we have to be very aware of this fact. What is Indian? It's a very difficult question. This is the most difficult question to have answered. Up till now, Angres chale gaye, Bharat se kab se bhaut chale gaye. Up till now, to the Indian psyche, modern means Western, and Indian means Sanskrit. This has remained a disease with us. More when we say modern, 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 whatever our youngsters are doing in the name of modernity, it was my own daughter. She went and bought a beautiful pair of jeans. She came home and cut here so that it can look torn like the Westerners. The same is done in music, the same is done in painting, the same everything. I don't need to say it's bad. No, it's not bad. But why should we be gearing all our sensibilities? Look at the West every time. Am I keeping up with them? No. This is a very, very difficult disease. I think it's time we got over it. Now, every time when I look at it, there's so many differences. Can you imagine the sensible differences? When I came to Delhi, realized what was already she was a witness to the sufferings I had. I was a young man of 20. I was not this old man. I was better looking I was younger. I'll show you that. <laughs> At that time, a foreigner who claimed to be an expert of Indian art, his commitment was to belittle Manipuri dance. I could do anything. I was a young man. I could fight with him because if I fight with a critic, I'll be digging my own grave. I suffered, for them, I realized that what we all suffer from many drawbacks. We are conditioned. What we see need not be always correct. What we hear need not always be correct. What I smell need not always be correct. For example, you look at cinema house. Optical illusion is very common, everybody knows. Optical illusion, everybody knows. Two pieces shown here, one looks longer, one looks shorter, but it is the same length. Even optical illusion applies to color. A white color may appear green when put with somebody else, something else together, like that. Sound happens to be that also. Why I give an example in the very beginning is, look at it. You are looking at a picture or looking at a screen. Oh, the heroine is speaking, hero is speaking, dancing, singing, and they are singing. But sound is coming from here. But you are cheating yourself and thinking that there is a sound in the same manner. 
years can cheat you. When I was working for the Commonwealth Games, I was assigned to do the money for I had 80 dancers. I composed the music, I composed the dance. The music was sent to Bombay, that was a competition. Committee of, committee of ministers decided your music should be accepted by a music director of the film industry. Mm -hmm. Because, and of course, that you did. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> one of my friends was up. So we all know that. Since I, I also sent my music to them, then they didn't send me the music. All the music have been returned after they improved. According to them, they improved their orchestration. Okay? <laughs> Manipuri never came. Manipuri never came. I said, what's the matter? One month has gone, it has not come back. I called them, they are very busy, film music directors, and I gone, they're very busy. <laughs> Finally, I happened to catch a wife. Mrs. So and so, yes, Mrs. Say. We have studied your music, it is completely out of tune, we can help it. Okay. I said, and then please, uh, sir, they sent it back. When they sent it back, it was completely out of tune. Because their sensibility cannot understand that many free music is like this. As I told you, you can be misled when you're doing something you're not used to. Your judgment can go wrong. Sight and hearing, smelling, everything. Side by side, we have 200 sitar players practicing every day to play the music. I gave them the recorded music. I gave them their notation, both in staff note and Hindi note. Telugu, oh, I'm sorry, but the Nathan Katakatagre, every music they practice every day. Manipuri, nobody played. Ek gaya, do din gaya, ek mahina gaya. I'm very worried. Then I said, I don't like to interfere because I'm not a music director. Then finally, after a month, the music director called me. Mr. Singh, can you please help us? Uh, we cannot play this music. What did you ask me earlier? Just because it's system, because the music is different from there so much, I held the microphone, I held the paper, and I read out the notation, singing in note. Only three times I repeated and they learned the whole thing. They found the key to see. You can be blind, you can be deaf, you can be, or you, you can out of your senses. In this country, with so many varieties of culture, intercultural understanding is still lacking in our country. This is the whole problem. When I came to Delhi, I was taken to Trubani. When I saw the Kathak class, I was very amused. I said, how dance can be like this? Because I was uneducated to understand that. I heard so much about Bharatanatyam. Then I was on a picture, movie, why a very famous uh, dancer of those days, Shantarao danced. I said, this is so masculine, to my taste. I'm sorry, I don't think she was a bad dancer. In the same manner, Katakali didn't look like a dance to me. It needed time for me to learn. So, my dear friends, at the very beginning, I start with that India has to yet understand what is intercultural understanding. And right in front of me is my sister, Mrs. Venkata Raman. She knew the problem. Then she did what? Participatory research. She did. She went to Manipur, became a Manipuri. Listen, sat there, sat there, sat there. And then she discovered, wow, there's something behind this, which nobody sees. So this is only a part of my opening now coming to this. What kind of preservation we're going to do? Preservation, preservation. I read a book on Japan's very, very old dance book, Bungaku and Gangaku. This is a Buddhist art movement. Only preserving the royal palace of Japan. They were very concerned that if our artists perform for the audience, they'll be corrupted because they will start pleasing the, art, <coughs> pleasing the audience. So audience is not allowed. They perform only in the real palace, ambassadors are allowed, or very, very special people were allowed. What is research? It was really preserved as much as possible without audience influence. Oh, the result, the art stopped changing to society. So it became a kind of 
like picking up a fossil from a, from a place or something. So it is absolutely unrelated to the world today. That is also another question. Then you make a film, a film made 200 years back, for example, today, you have to go back 200 years to really relish the race. Aswadan karne ke liye. That is where the Aswadan comes in. So, I or the audience is half the performer, I'm half the performer. Writer is half the performer, reader is more important. He's playing his part so well. This is the situation. Now, when I come to this, uh, well, Sharon has very thoughtfully done this, very, very carefully. Beyond the technique is a very dangerous word. Beyond the technique. At times, true. I've seen Bharatanatyam, I've seen Katha, I've seen all the dancers, and they've seen me also. We are all changing. Even the writers are changing. Realize is changing, everybody is changing. What she used to say about it, 30 years back she was speaking the same thing. And the same way we are all changing. And we know there is a change, but they are changing in a way almost unnoticed. We know the clock is moving. But it's moving so slow that we don't see this movement, but it becomes teen jobas gaya, paanch baje ga thode dheer me. Daans bhi teen jobas gaya, che baje ga thode dheer me. So we have to realize this problem and come in terms of this. She used the word interlinking images from poetry, literature, psychology, uh, well, philosophy and so on and so forth. Hyperlinking, wow, is it, is it computer word? How you hyperlink it with the anchor text? Okay, hyperlink with the hypertext. But are all these factors present in our mind? Are we ready for that? The computer should be prepared with necessary hardware and software. So we need more hardware for ourselves, we need more for software for us speaking on computer terms. Now, it, 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 so images from poetry, literature, psychology, philosophy. From poetry is a very, very important word. Poetry is a very important word. Every style uses Gita Govind in the Kavya. How beautiful. The language has a, the language has a, its own music. The poetry has its own drama. If you read it, Lalita Lamangalata Parishil in the Komalama, how beautiful. You read it with your eyes, you feel. But if you read Lalita Labangalata Parishil in the Komalama Lesamiri, it becomes more beautiful. Lalita Labangalata Parishil in it becomes more beautiful. And then, you are adding this spice. Namak bhi laga diya, ye laga diya, urgati laga diya, ghi laga diya, the proper temperature, the treatment. Then it becomes a great work of art. But please don't forget. We don't know each other's language. To somebody who doesn't understand Sanskrit, the poetry is lost to him. Before the dance performance, the dancers are much more clever than me. They speak better English than me, and they have a better command of the language. They so beautiful expresses using mudra just than another. But I assure you, by the time the real dance comes, we won't forget about it. Who comes in the first? Should I refer to that and look at my dance? So we lose this. You have lost the poetry, you have lost the music, and finally you have lost the dance also. You are only seeing a beautiful dance. Otherwise, this is a complete art. Complete art. In order to relish it, one has to know the language. Beauty language. Music of the language. And how it is interpreted. Another factor. Interpretation is a visual form. Coming to the highly, uh, uh, the linking part of it. We we'll link it together. The style, Manipuri, from the beginning to end, this style was born never to be an entertainment. No, never, 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 never. It was a worship down, right? It be history, composition, theater, everything, everything. And understatement is the secret behind it. 
that comes to Kadagali, overstatement in the power it has. Both beautiful, extremes, not pole and south pole, hmm. but both are doing the same thing in a different way. Overstatement has us in value. Understatement has us in value. Both are extremely powerful if you apply it properly. The smallest thing in the universe is the most powerful thing in the world, atom, atomic power. That's the smallest thing science has discovered, invented so far. In the same manner, all these dance forms have their strong points, weak points. But unfortunately, when it comes to my style of Manipuri, it happens to be so completely different from the rest of the styles, in concept conceptually and also empirically, they're very different. Very different. So let us first see how different, how we bridge this gap. It is in need of the day. I work very much. I came in the year 1954. Uh, that means a uh, long time back. And started working in Trevini. Very, very fortunately, Trevini people encouraged me to do whatever I wanted. Then I collected this young girl over there. She was my student. <laughs> Then there were others like her. Naturally, she was about 13, 14 at that time, but very talented dancer at that time. And um, <laughs> she supported me, then there were others. Then I collected a group. Then one of my students happened to be a well-to-do lady. She helped me get some artists. She really would pay for them. And we did our production. Babu Bhan was the first production, long time back, about 56 years back. Then bad news, that was a, such a great success. And I open it, Manipuri can do this. Why I am saying this? Manipuri happens, the word Chakoi is the official translation of the Manipuri, uh, English word dance, but it is not a correct translation. Because in Manipuri, dance, what is the meaning by dance? Jagoi, Jagoi is those dances done by women, boy in Rathila. That is Jagoi. It comes to Sankrit and Pung, what happens? That is not Jagoi anymore, that is Jagoi. But when it comes to Tantra, it's a completely different world. So culture to culture, you cannot translate. The concept of translating from one language to another is a wrong concept. In order to understand an art form like dance, until you dip your hand in that, until you pick up the clay and play with that, you will never become a potter. Mm. In that kind of a way, Manipuri happens to be rather strange. Those who got used to it, those who learned it, they got addicted, literally addicted. Well, they are very different from me. Chabiri has given their lives for Manipuri dance. This girl has given her life for Manipuri dance. Not Manipuri by birth, but Manipuri by choice. This is what is important. Mm -hmm. And they think Manipuri, they can understand Manipuri, and they feel that. Coming to another point, we have to see this from the point of what is happening in the world today. The richness and interpretation of these two dance, audience opposite, yeah. Rasa, sharing or rasa with you, let me come down to very simple examples of how Manipuri works. For one, it's a very formal art, extremely formal art, and when it comes to improvisation. Extreme improvisation in dance would be done in two stages. Your choreographer, your teacher who is making the dance, composing the dance, and another. The way you perform, how you perform, in these two phases. And how you improvise. You are improvising because something that can be done some other way, some other way can be found, some other way you can face it. But in Manipuri, first thing we are told is you'll never find a Manipuri dancer having eye contact with you. This is precisely what we are told. Because you belong, the moment you become a performer, you are some other person. The dancer, the audience. Some kids in a performer never looks at you. From the state of Manipuri dancer never looks at you. We don't communicate this way, but we communicate by belonging to another world. You belong to that world of imagination, I belong to that world of imagination. Then we live in that world, float together above the clouds. 
That is the way we work. First is that and another. Word for word translation in terms of mudras and gestures, we never do. It is not our system. But certain gestures we use from the Abhinay Darpan or any of all Lokit Mudra we use whenever it is suitable and whenever it helps us and what is convenient. Then those people who are used to the other scale on the other side of the picture, they find it very strange. That is why I said audience needs education, does education, <laughs> language education, literature education, the way he's missing lots of things. He's missing lots of things. Another factor. Kathak is the most innovative thing in the world. They've so innovative and so did the world that they even talk with the audience. Now my this chakar kare jara my chakar dar kare. A kind of virtuosity. Virtuosity, I appreciate it. But in that, we're talking like you. In the midst of that, uh, do you have a pen? I can ask you that kind of a pen. So the dancers completely avoid that. So we must accept the fact. Then some people say, when you don't use mudra, how you communicate? Mudras means signs. Gesture is sign. Sign, sign, sign. Okay. Symbol. Symbol is the right word. Yes, uh, my English is not very good. I'm sorry for that. Symbol is the right word. But it is a convention we use. Or meaning. Meaning. Yeah. Meaning is the right word. The concept of meaning is as problematic as the concept of mind. Because it is for a mind that a certain object, a certain object, a certain sound, a certain figure can mean some other thing. It is the mind. Since nobody in the world on the floors and the thing of psychology have not been able to find out what is, what is mind, it's impossible. It is why when Yaksha asked Yudhisthira, what is the fastest thing in the world? He didn't say, he didn't say light of, uh, well, speed of light. Well, it is 3,000 miles. Minute. No, mind is the fastest thing in the world. In that way, in terms of Ved, Vedanta, Upanishad, beautiful examples are given not as scientific proof, but as a beautiful statement which makes you see what it means. This is precisely what the painter Picasso said, right? Art is a lie. This makes you see the truth. Indirectly, you're made to understand that. And when I, well, when I see that, yes, there's somebody there. Look here, Mr. Steele. You know, they cannot do it. But my dance is saying everything, including semicolon, clamp, command, and full stop, etc., etc. Okay, okay, okay. I appreciate it. It's a great thing. But silent, the other person must know the sign language. Otherwise, nothing. It means nothing. Plus. If you mean that, if you communicate in literal communication, in that case, the Prime Minister of India met the Prime Minister of Pakistan and they talked. This is the best dance in that case. If you mean the right communication, in communication in art, it doesn't mean, never means literal, literal meaning. Poetry doesn't ever mean literal meaning. Poetry means with this and see. If you are going to Understand a cat is sitting on a mat. This is not poetry. <laughs> the poet has to say in a manner that I don't know how to say. He only knows how to say. That is it. Then Sharon has very carefully put me into a very, very difficult position. <laughs> Externalization of the experience, internalization of your experience. Wow. <laughs> this is very clever girl. How do you know these psychological terms? But I thought, well, she had put me a chair and let me do it. I started reading books. <laughs> then I came across an article. <coughs> she might be knowing a person, I don't know him. Jim Gus. She said, he's a, oh, well, an anthropologist, poet, and a, oh, a very great person. He said, culture. Is an incomplete musical genre. Culture is an incomplete music, and it is never meant to be complete. That is absolutely right. 
how many times you're going to listen to the same song again and again unchanged. By the third time, you're fed up. So it has got to change, to adapt to you, to adapt to every, everybody, to adapt to the world. So this idea of richness interpretation takes to dance, giving the audience the space to enter the imaginary world where Rasa resides. Rasa is a very, very big. This is why in India, Bharata, well, he greatest work, not to Shastra naturally, but he meant only art of Ashtarasha. Then came Shastamas later. Then we Vaishnavas came later. Bhakti Rasa, we in Manipur is Bhakti Rasa. Shingarasa, everything we do in Bhakti. That is a whole different. You have got to be Bhakta. Then what happens again? We have read, okay, kinds of performances. But the mention about forms of drama, not everything he means that. There are forms of drama. But he didn't go very terrible. Then Tananjaya picked up the train. Dasharupa Natakam saprakanam kuma yoga evacha vana samabhakar viti prasanam diva. There's no artist. artist. All these are uh, Dasharupaka. Beautifully explained, but he didn't explain one thing. Bharata also forget to mention this for us. He mentioned the Prakshagriha. But the role of Prakshagriha was some theatre. I have read very, very carefully all the role or make uh, theatres they make. This has not been explained very well. I, out of sheer need, studied it. Whatever has been explained in Nathya Shastra is very much like the stage we have. One-sided performance, audience sitting there and performing. In the case of Malipuri dance, we perform in the mandala. Audience sit all around. And the effect is very different. We all have seen Sankirtana performing in the mandala is divine. Why they perform? They perform to please their gods. They perform to take please the bhaktas. The moment they are put here on the stage, it has lost all that quality. Because they are performing for theater goers who want entertainment. Psychologically, and in terms of real dance, this is one of the factors. Of course, I know that everybody here is an art lover or a, or a dancer or a painter or somebody, so I don't have to speak much. But at the same time, very, very simple explanation about uh, how we perform and uh, why we perform. What is the basic of Manipuri dance? Why these people don't wear gongru? They are still un un very unusual people. Why they don't look at us? They are very unusual people. Oh, well, I am not in the fittest form because I am suffering from a spinal problem. But the pictures are playing very nicely. You are all dancers, you know what I am going to say. Manipuri dance, conceptually and empirically, both ways, I say conceptually and empirically, believe in not being harsh, be soft. What the result, if you move something straight, it has to have a beginning and an end. If you want to drop something, it has release drop. We avoid it to the base of our ability. We don't have straight lines, angular lines. What's the circular, no even second, but in some way continue it. You all see many people, well, for one, Katha gives it the footwork so beautifully. It's a treat to see them. In order to do that, they have to hit their feet very cleverly. In order to hit, you cannot bend your knees. You can hit They use straight legs. They use. But in Manipuri, we use bent knee in a very, very, very clever way. We use, we call it compensation of movement. If I, please, if I move like this, it is straight. If I move something differently, it is compensating the energy, both directionally and physically. You're compensating. We compensate. If I bend down, I compensate with this. This is the way. Simple. Thin, get a breath. Thin, down. This is different too. Thin. Hmm. That is straight. Beautiful again. 
this is also beautiful. So you precondition yourself, my dear, my friend, that this is a compensation. If you have, we have three important parts of the body, this is not compensated. But if I move something different, it is compensated. You don't feel the harshness of it. But your whole body has to be trained to do that from the beginning to end. If you walk also always with a compensation. This applied to Cholom by the Chekhoi. But only in martial arts, because in martial arts, you have to hit, you have to destroy somebody, you have to destroy the enemy. So this is Cholom, and this is Chekhoi. In martial arts, no. This head could have straight, you could cut, you could stab, you could kill, you could break. That is the difference. The same is true about hand movements, the same is true about all of that. Now, considering the situation, how much time I have left? No? Am I, am You've I, got 10 oh. minutes in left, but we want questions too, maybe. Up to uh, what, what about the... If you want to show a little video. of the video, we yeah, have 10 have to minutes pay. total. So we didn't have to. Uh, if we want to show time. video and questions, then you should finish. Don't use any of We have 10 minutes for everything. For everything. Yes, 10 minutes. Okay, okay, okay. For okay. everything, video oh, okay. and questions. Oh. oh, but it's a very wrong thing for me to be doing. I suffer from a little hearing loss. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I, I don't advertise it. <laughs> so, I don't have to tell, I don't have, uh, if I wear hearing aids, it is an advertisement, bad advertisement. So I carry my human hearing aid. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's much better, much better. Yeah, uh, at the moment I can hear, it's not a big guy. So please choose, uh, uh, well, uh, we have time for, we, go, we have to go to Dasha Petty Bowen. First the, 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 the the yeah, yeah. So, Guruji, okay. now, Guruji, uh, you, you're w please speak more. Um, but we want to show a few minutes of your dance. Okay. So okay. we can do that. But you finish. Question answer. And question answer. Okay. 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 Right. He wants to show the film. You want to see the film? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We can see five, <coughs> five minutes of it. Uh, Guruji, before I show this film, I want to apologize that I can't apologize for giving you such a hard time to have to work so hard to think and to do. But it's been such an interesting, these seminars, because everyone has had to challenge themselves to think in ways we don't usually go. And and it's been very rewarding for everyone. Okay, I'm going to play this. You tell me if you want me to jump ahead. Because it's long. Volume? Where's the sound? Turn on the speakers. Where are the speakers? I'm not going to pause it because it's very long. So oh, yes, yeah. it's very long. microphone for the sound. The speakers aren't working. It's not working.
to stop it but Tangible Treasures of Indian Performing Arts was recorded by Kamalini Dutt. It's not a question even that Durdash and recorded things because other programs were, you were saying, even in that great film, they wouldn't, they couldn't record you with the kind of nuance and detail that uh, Kamalini Ji has, pro has projected because, as she always says, uh, the nuance of Bob is what you can get on the camera. And, and everything that we see is an example of that. And her contribution to Indian performing arts um, deserves, I mean, she should be not Padma Bhushan, only Padma Bhushan. That's all. Okay. Who's got any question for Luigi? Thank you so much. It has been so, uh, it's been, Guruji, it's been a revelation. Kapilaji always spoke about Guru Amobi Singh. And uh, today I've understood a lot what she said. But I still would like you to elaborate when you, what is if you get a text and you are addressing the divine, what is the technique of portraying Abhinaya and Manodharma? Both Abhinaya and Manodharma are the same in many ways. It means the same thing, also it doesn't mean the same thing. No, but in Manipur. Yeah, yeah, that is very true. First of all, you have to have complete mastery of the technique. Whichever dance you take, it should become your second nature. Like we are 
conversing with each other, your body should be able to speak as fluently as your mind, as your speech. You have to be free of your technique. You use it very freely, of course, completely, but the consciousness of the body finally disappears. The totality of it can be silent. It can be forceful. It takes on another form. A third factor comes into this. Both conception and perception. They take another form and becomes another factor. I give an example. It can be done in innumerable ways. In innumerable ways, most effectively. A thing can be transmitted depending upon the medium you use. A girl has been punished by her father for behaving very badly. And the father comes and says, slap, slap, you're bad, good, okay. She would cry for two minutes. Over, she thinks, having punished, it's over. Then the father thinks, this is not enough. I have to punish her. <laughs> and another way, next morning, the father is reading newspaper. The father is very disappointed. Papa, Papa, father doesn't reply. Doesn't reply. When he slapped her, she didn't mind it. She bore it. But by the third, fourth time, she said, Papa, Papa, she couldn't bear the silence. Papa, <gasps> Papa, <laughs> the depth of that silence we should be able to create. All the extremes can be ex explored. Similarity and similarity. When we use Abhinaya, mostly we use similarities. Or when it comes to that, or not similar, cause and effect we use. But to what extent is another point? It is a convention. For those people who miss Shikhar Mutra, it cannot be universal. As I said, it is conventional. But you have to know my language. You have to know my sign language to some extent. Otherwise, I wouldn't be to. The beside the preparation part of it, part of it this is Shikhar. Can be no such thing. Can be Bhagavan Shankar. But look at it carefully. Shikhar. In old Rome. When Shekhar Mudra is put upside down, is the death of the gladiator. The gladiator is going to be killed. Well, it can mean different things to different people. Different cultures can mean different things. You'll be surprised one day. <coughs> I was traveling the train to Gwalior. One of my drummers, a new drummer, a Brahman boy, was traveling with me. Before I knew what was it, he was, he was slapping some other person. Check, check, check. He was fighting with him. I said, what has happened? He touched my poo with his foot. <coughs> how the person there will know it is a drum. He said, how would he know touching the drum with the foot is the biggest sin in the world? So culture and culture at times can be similar, it can be different. But for your part, since you're using a medium, then another thing, I didn't have the time to explain about it. She said, externalization of experience, or internalization of experience. This is a very, very good expression this girl has done. I remember a great philosopher in his book, Arts and the Man, Arvind Edmund. Whatever life may be, it's an experience. A flow through time, a duration, a many colored episode in eternity. But many of the experiences go by. I'm not bothered about it. But there are certain experiences. What's the main action in the heart 
discount my memory, my heart, my mind, my sentiment. And how you externalize it? She put the question of internalizing it. Then how you externalize that depth of the sentiment? You can be sad, you can be happy, you can be anything. I don't find any meaning. I'm a dancer, I couldn't express it. I'm a writer, I can express it. My words fail to do it. But all of a sudden, I heard Hari Prasad Chaurasiya play his flute. Then Allah impaired me. This is what I wanted to say. The tune is, this is what happened. Abstract. Do not even ignore it. That flute is saying what I didn't know how to say. So in terms of color, in terms of line, color, texture, form, rhythm, in terms of silence, we use all of these plus miracles we create. If I use this, once you master that, then you're an artist. Your medium can be energy. My answer is not direct, I know. This is what happens in operation. When father and son were talking, Shweta Ged and his son, Udalaka, you have come from the uh, ashram, you, have, you are very educated now. Have you learned who you are? Your father, I didn't learn that. Hmm. Bring a seed of this people tree. Break it. Papa has broken it. Further, you know this people tree came out of this seed. Yes, I know it, Papa. Have you broken it? Have you found anything? Then nothing left. That don't my see. That thou art. This is the kind of Upanishadic, Vedantic expression. This is why I did it in a very indirect way. But as a student of that, you have to be able to understand these things because these can be put in harsh words. If somebody said, explain about this, what are you trying to say to me? If I knew how to say how to say it in words, why should I paint? Why should I dance? This is the answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guruji. I mean, I think you've shared so many interesting concepts, and the idea of being of forcing everyone to take so much time. But I think now we're going to have to do a part two of this seminar so that you can have another hour to finish what you didn't get to share. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I have a small token of affection for you and for Cheryl. I. Oh, thank you. I tell you, he needs some help to take off these things and give them to Sarato. Good help. Now it's my turn to thank everybody. Thank you very much. Yeah, not at all. Let's take off your mask.